you can hang out here all you want if you don't chew on anything. Welcome to the show, everybody. Well, this is a real leather aftermarket pilot brand steering wheel I found on eBay for a really good price a couple of years ago. And just like most aftermarket wheels, it didn't come with a horn button that was branded to my car. Now, I want a button that actually has a Porsche logo and has a nicer quality than most of the buttons I found for sale online. So on this show, I do some experimenting and I show you a couple of different ways to make some inexpensive horn buttons that do just that. Welcome to Project Porsche, everyone. Stay tuned. There's basically a couple of different styles of buttons online. Either it's the plastic button with a epoxy sticker on top of it or a uh, vinyl or a leather stamp logo on top. The leather ones look pretty nice, but this is about doing things on a budget and I wanted to come up with something that looked like Porsche could have made it themselves. So I thought I'd show you guys a different way to do it that I think is actually as nice or nicer than the ones you can buy online. My first idea was to use a metal emblem from a keychain. There's a lot of these keychains offered online and sometimes you can find them for a really low price. So I just did a search to look for an emblem that I thought looked decent and was not very expensive so I could justify just buying it to try it in the center of the horn button. I started with this one that was six bucks. The only thing was it didn't list what the measurements were, but since it was only six dollars, I thought I'd take a chance. And actually the emblem is pretty nice. I mean, it's pretty close to what a factory Porsche emblem looks like. It has the right shape and the enamel job is pretty good. The only thing is it, it turned out to be a little too big, so I couldn't use it in the center of a button, but it was the perfect size for the center of my Challenger gas cap. So when I get to that eventually, I'll be putting this emblem in the center of the cap, and I think that's gonna look awesome. So I kept looking for emblems and I ran across this company. They offer a few different sizes of emblems and a couple of them are perfect for the center of a horn button. I ordered a few different emblems and that way I had something to work with so I could make a couple of different horn buttons and come up with something that I really liked. This is a pilot steering wheel and this is the button that came with it. The key to making this work is starting with a horn button that has some kind of a lip that goes around the outer ring of the button. That way you can build up the epoxy to the top of that emblem and it looks like something that a factory would have made. I wanted the emblem to sit flush with the top of the button. So on this one, I carved out the center of the button so I could sink the emblem down as much as possible. So basically I added an extra step for myself here on the first one. I wanted to see if I could actually pour epoxy around that emblem and get it to level out on its own so that then basically the button was just finished. I took a chance using the 15 minute plastic adhesive and later on I used the uh, JB steel stuff. So I mixed up the epoxy and then squirted it around the outside and tried to get it to settle as much as it could. After it dried, you could see basically this type of epoxy must shrink a little bit and you can kind of see some of the bubbles and surface imperfections in there. And I wanted to see if I could salvage this button. So I decided to cover the entire top with epoxy and sand down to that emblem and create an inset logo that looked like it was supposed to be that way. I took a file and I went around the outside of the first layer of epoxy and I sanded it down. So basically this is where I started the process that worked for uh, making the top flat and then what I did for the second button also. I taped off the emblem and I was careful to trim precisely around the top of the emblem so that the edge was left exposed but the very top was covered. So I'm going to mix up some of this and then we're going to uh, try squirting it on here for the final time. This stuff, it dries harder. It's like a harder, shinier plastic. Dude, it's still gray. I didn't add that much black paint, so the epoxy still was a little gray, but I ended up painting the top of it black when I was done anyway, so it didn't matter. There's gonna be imperfections in there. 
Let's see if I can file this thing down to something usable. But as long as you're covering it with something smooth or a textured finish, it doesn't matter. This is gonna take a while. Probably have to go out to the garage and do it because yeah. besides that, I'm making too much of a mess in here, so. All right, so double-sided tape on here, stick this on here, and then we're gonna put this in the vise. We're gonna take my uh, power drill and we're gonna grind the epoxy down and uh, see if I've left myself enough to work with so I can shape this thing into a nice smooth epoxy and enamel button. Just, just see the tape coming through, so it's probably a good time to stop. Now that I knew that sanding down to the top of that emblem worked, I had an idea of how I wanted my second button to go. I'm gonna go take this and paint it. So I decided to finish this one in epoxy, and then the second one I make, I actually inset the emblem and use a textured finish on the top instead. And there it is, ready for a clear coat. Alright guys, well it's the moment of truth. And let it cure overnight. So now you know how to make a uh, enamel horn button, it's not hard. So there is my first horn button. And I like the way the actual metal emblem looks underneath that epoxy. I think it looks better than just a printed sticker. Horn Button 2 was this super inexpensive one from eBay. It had a nice high lip around it, so I could pour my epoxy in there and I could completely cover the emblem, sand down to it, and I would have a nice even top when I was done. After I covered the emblem completely and sanded down to the top again, this time I mixed up another batch of epoxy. I used a paintbrush and I tapped the texture onto the top of it and then I covered it with black paint. After the paint dried, I removed the masking tape from the emblem and voila, a textured horn button with an inset metal emblem. I really like the way this one turned out and I think it looks good in the center of my steering wheel. I mean, that looks like Porsche made this horn button. It actually looks pretty doggone good. I think if we change these to black screws, this is a decent option for the center of this wheel. I thought I'd see what this looks like with the black ones. And actually, I think it looks pretty good. I bought two other horn buttons for this project and I ended up combining the two to create one. Ooh. Ah. This one is definitely different, isn't it? And when I ordered this first one, I was surprised because I, I didn't expect for it to have a plastic, a clear plastic cover over the top like it did. But that gave me an idea. So I took apart a Flaming River button and that button that I bought and I was able to combine the parts of the two to create one single button with an emblem mounted in the center of it that looked like it was floating and was covered by a clear plastic glass. I just epoxied the stud onto there after I painted that cup for the horn contact black. And then I epoxied the smallest emblem I bought on top of that. If I just set the glass on there, it should like help center it a little bit. 
So that's going to be really cool. Super cool. We'll put these all together at the same time and do a show about it. And there it is assembled. A custom floating emblem horn button. Thanks for checking out my in-depth creative way to make an aftermarket cool horn button episode. Thanks for watching the show, guys. See you next time.